You're telling us that what we're doing can't be done, but it was done in the 60s. I just don't believe it. I believe that our folks today are even better than back then. And then there's the issue of, well, U.S. government isn't doing it. Well, folks, 85% of NASA's dollars go to our contractor community. Our contractors build these vehicles. So it's a question of a new way of procuring the vehicles. So instead of doing a cost plus procurement, which basically says, we'll pay you what, it think you, what you think it costs, and then anything else you think it might cost after that. That's not very efficient for taxpayers, especially on something you have a really good definition for how you need to do it. You have to do cost plus for those one at a time, really cutting edge missions. But again, thousands of launches have occurred to and from low Earth orbit. So we believe we can do a fixed fee transportation system using our existing unbelievably capable uh, commercial, uh, commercial industry partners. We don't just mean entrepreneurial partners. We mean our industry partners that have worked with us on Constellation. We mean down the way where we launched Atlas and Delta Rockets and United Launch Alliances had a number of successful missions. We believe there will be some creative partnerships where NASA will be able to procure at least two systems. Talk about this program putting all our eggs in one basket. The former program put all our eggs in one basket, and that was the basket of the Russians over the next five to seven to ten years, depending on when we could have developed the Ares Orion vehicle that was going to cost tens of billions of dollars. We can and plan, if allowed, to invest in the very private sector that made this nation great to take our astronauts to and from low Earth orbit and the International Space Station. They can take others as uh, their markets will develop. We will therefore be able to lower the marginal cost of what it takes to launch not only our precious payloads of crew and cargo, the military precious payloads, and the U.S. may just win back some of the commercial market share that we have entirely lost to the rest of the world. What is a commercial launch worth in this country when it, uh, if it's not going overseas from here? It is of such high value that we do this, that we believe one of the very goals of our government is to invest in that R&D and technical capability that, in fact, will allow our uh, private sector to be more competitive. So that's in the Space Act. That's one of the things NASA was uh, created to do. And we believe it's time to do this uh, for the transportation to and from North Orbit with crew and cargo. Now this, what this will do is lower our operational costs. We can't afford to only fly a couple times a year. We want to do more. So if you're going your operational and infrastructure costs, that's going to allow you to spend the money where it's of highest value. Doing those exciting, amazing things like creating the space and civilization, doing the science that others are not going to be able to do. Uh, we've increased our Earth sciences budget to really understand the phenomenon of what's happening with climate change on this planet. Uh, we have small increases in aeronautics, which I think all of us who, who fly uh, recognize needs some help, and in fact, we need uh, more technologies that are going to help as we fly more uh, to not have uh, those aircraft be so environmentally uh, unfriendly. And it's going to allow us to invest in the technology that NASA was founded to do. We want to cooperate with our partners internationally. We'll be working with them, as I mentioned later today. Uh, we have a number of things coming up where we'll have the opportunity to explain our program better to our partners. It offers robotic exploration missions that we weren't able to have in the budget in the past, and it allows us to really think about where we can go next. If you aren't investing in technology right now to get to Mars, we have to lift the mass of 12 international space stations. Now, who believes we're going to be able to do that anytime soon? Uh, you also would need a huge rocket which has um, 
at this point would cost us 60 to 100 billion dollars and take 15 to 20 years. We're investing in technologies like on-orbit fuel depots, or we want to, I should say, like on-orbit fuel depots, inflatable technologies, uh, aero shells that can allow us to inflate them to get to Mars. So the mass you take to Mars is so much less that it would be even just the technologies we have identified so far, two space stations mass instead of 12 to Mars. So if that, uh, as those technologies develop, over the next few years, and these are not new, you know, breakthroughs that are uh, decades off. These are things NASA knows how to do, but we haven't had the money to demonstrate them, which is, you know, NASA likes to do before they put them on missions. So as we demonstrate these technologies over the next couple of years, we can set an architecture for a heavy lift vehicle that makes sense to go to the destinations that are the most exciting. And let me close with a destination issue. I know folks have felt uh, that we are giving up on the moon and that is not the case. As you create a spacefaring civilization, the moon is no question going to be a part of any expansion. But we've been there six times and there are a lot of other exciting places to go. And in fact, an asteroid, as you know, asteroids are tied inherently to our past on this planet and uh, to our future, most certainly just a matter of when. So. Us getting a better up-close look at an asteroid is something that could be really uh, critical to humanity's future. And in fact, going to an asteroid uh, requires probably no more lift than we have with some of the existing uh, heavy lift rockets. We also have uh, do not have the requirement for that heavy lander that you require when you're going to uh, a larger planetary body like the moon or Mars. So this is the kind of mission, although it's much more exciting than the seventh mission to the moon in our view, it's also of more value and we can very likely make that happen uh, for less of a percentage of our mission than just creating a huge infrastructure that, uh, as Augustine pointed out, we were never going to get to fly. Uh, I did mention that a constellation program was unsustainable and the first stage of it was because we were getting to the space station after it was gone. But in addition, we weren't going back to the moon. People have said, oh, we've given up the moon. The Constellation program, in fact, was so behind schedule and taking so much more money, we weren't able to operate it in a way that was going to allow us to go to the moon before even 2030. Couldn't afford to build the heavy lift launch vehicle until after the space station uh, was deorbited, and even then, it would have been available in about 2028, 20, and we wouldn't have been able to afford the lander. Uh, so it was a tough, tough situation to inherit when you're like me and you've dedicated your career to creating a space traveling civilization, and I believe it's the most important thing we can be doing in society today. So we truly believe this president has taken an unbelievably positive step toward actually creating a spacefaring civilization, increasing NASA's budget at a time when very few other domestic agencies were getting any kind of increase. And the reason he trusts NASA enough to make this such a major portion of not only the increases for domestic uh, agencies is because we have a, a role to play in our future economic benefit. We are an investment in the R&D base of the country, and NASA had given up on developing a lot of these technologies. Our economic growth in this country is based on innovation. If you look at our growth of the past decade, that is what drives this country. So what, what we believe we've done is take this amazing democracy, uh, this amazing capitalist society, taking the best of what the government does, the very best of what our industry can do. We're going to work with our partners, not only in industry, but internationally to go farther, faster, and uh, really make this space program and NASA what it was envisioned in the Space Act and what I believe it's, it's been doing for decades. We just needed to focus it in a way uh, that NASA isn't just doing the same things over and over for NASA's sake.
we have to provide that basic value to the taxpayer, uh, to the public, and help get us the return that uh, has made this nation great. So I really, I really uh, believe that somehow our program has been misunderstood. I <laughs> recognize that change is hard. And a program that had grown to nearly $200 billion does uh, cause there to be a lot of sort of self-interest in promoting the status quo. So uh, what I believe, and I think what this president was elected to do, is not just do the status quo because change is hard, but to do the important things to make sure that our country gets back on track and our space program is a huge part of our country. So I, I just couldn't be more proud of what this president uh, has done. He's chosen to do a hard thing at NASA. Politically, it's a hard choice, and obviously it's not a popular one. But that is what leadership is about, and NASA is about leadership. So it's, it's just a, a wonderful thing to be part of, and I look forward to trying to explain it better to folks. Thanks so much.